他的国家曾经经历连年战乱和惨痛的大屠杀。在这片百废待兴的土地上，他选择了适合自身国情民情的发展道路。在他的带领下，这个千秋之国经历了涅槃重生，被称为非洲经济发展的典范。卢旺达总统卡加梅接受高端访谈独家专访，敬请收看。关注国际焦点，洞察世界风云。各位好，欢迎收看本期的高端访谈，我是主持人李彤彤。那今天呢，我们要一起对话的这位主人公来自于非洲。童年时期呢，他曾经跟随家人是流亡邻国。到了青年时期，他打过游击，而且经历过冲突、战乱和种族大屠杀。二零零零年，他当选了总统，带领国家实现了民族和解，而且经济的年均增速达到了百分之七。他就是卢旺达的总统卡加梅。那近日呢，我们的总台记者对卡加梅进行了独家专访。对于卢旺达的过去、现在和未来，他都有着怎样的思考呢？种族大屠杀曾经是这个国家的惨痛记忆。一九九四年四月至七月，卢旺达、图西和胡图两大部族发生大规模暴力冲突，共有五十万至一百万人惨遭屠戮，其中大部分遇难者为图西族人。二十八年过去了，从惨痛的大屠杀中重生，卢旺达早已今非昔比。现在的卢旺达政治稳定，治安良好，经济快速发展。本世纪以来，卢旺达国内生产总值年增速长期在百分之七以上。即使在新冠疫情的影响下，世界银行发布的报告仍显示，卢旺达是非洲大陆经济增长最快的五个国家之一。从百废待兴到非洲经济典范，卢旺达在卡加梅的带领下实现了逆袭。Uh, well, Mr. President,、uh, it's been just a few days since we arrived in Kigali, but、uh, we've been very impressed. I'm actually amazed by how clean, tidy, and safe、uh, the city is. In the past 20 years or so, you have led the Rwandan people in uh, achieving uh, all-round development, and、uh, you have you, you yourself have been regarded by many as、uh, a leader of vision. What is the philosophy of governance you have followed in the past years? Well, first of all, the, the governing philosophy. Build is on、uh, understanding of our responsibilities and、uh, the challenges we have to deal with, but mainly putting people, the citizens of this country, at the centre of everything we have to do.、Uh, talking about transformation, what are the resources available? What are the needs of the people, and how do they participate themselves? So the leadership we try to provide bears that in mind. Again, we understand that people have to participate, have to contribute, have to be brought into the understanding of、uh, who we are, what we want to do, and then go ahead and do what we have to do. To get those results we want,、mm -hmm. and Rwanda has、uh, embarked on a development path that suits its own national conditions.、Uh, looking back at the progress、uh, Rwanda has made, socially, economically,、um, how do you assess the importance of Rwanda moving along the tracks that conform to your own、uh, national conditions? It's absolutely important for people. To contextualize everything, Rwanda, the situation、uh, provides us with a specific context and circumstance that we have、uh, to confront and manage our problems 
uh, bearing in mind that this is not unique to Rwanda. Uh, it's everywhere, or, or unique to the continent of Africa. So there is not necessarily a fixed model. There is no such a fixed model. For example, the country is landlocked, you know, find you have no access to the sea. We are a small country in the middle of the continent, challenged by all kinds of things, and the costs are always high on everything, added to even by our terrain, mountainous, and construction of a road or a house or is double, near almost what happens elsewhere. And so all these are things that really we can't uh, divert ourselves from and, and, and start uh, adopting uh, necessarily everything the way it is done elsewhere. Yeah, Mr. President, let's talk about Vision 2050. I've got to know this is a new blueprint for Rwanda following Vision 2020. And the goal is to build Rwanda into a uh, upper middle income country by 2035 and uh, a high income country by 2050. And I wonder how, what do you think are the keys to realizing this goal? We invested in our people. We educated them, and we are still continuing to do that, and there is a lot of work to do. We invested in health, public health. We built general infrastructure. We have invested technology uh, to serve different uh, areas. Um, our people understand what to expect and what is expected of them in terms of their contribution. So we, we, we've done well in the last 20 years. The vision for 2020, beginning with 2000, uh, maybe we didn't get 100% uh, what we set out to do, but we are very close. Maybe we were at 80, 85%. So that gap of 20 or 15% uh, constitutes uh, lessons for us. There are new things you have to deal with, so there is an overlap mm -hmm. of uh, filling these gaps that were left for the period the past, but there are things you have to do as of now, uh, and then thinking about the future. So we try to understand it that way and also mobilize uh, government and citizens uh, to be able to see it that way and, and to make it uh, simpler for everyone. And can China make contributions? Well, to begin with, China has already made a significant contribution to what we have already done. Looking at uh, from 2000 to 2020, we had a vision for that period of 20 years. And in that, so many things have happened. China contributed to the modernization of our infrastructure. The China has contributed to health, education, and uh, other systems. So that is already significant, and we are, we are grateful that has happened. And the country will continue to be open to uh, international cooperation. Well, that one is uh, indispensable. Uh, that one, we, we have to remain open uh, to partnership, to embrace uh, working with others and learning lessons from others, uh, uh, and even, uh, you know, really mobilize uh, investments, uh, ideas and from the rest of the world. But as we earlier talked about, uh, we have to be mindful of the fact that we, we, we are addressing specific problems of a specific country. 1994, Rwanda, according to its own country,
，卡加梅政府推行民族和解政策，改变人们的身份认同，废除胡图族、图西族之分，努力抚平卢旺达人的创伤。卡加梅还修订法律，严惩腐败，促进经济，消除贫困，并大力发展与外国的友好关系，努力让卢旺达从战争走向和平，从混乱走向发展。In 1994, there was no hope. Only darkness. Today, light radiates from this place. How did it happen? Rwanda became a family once again. The arms of our people intertwined constitute. The pillars of our nation. We hold each other up. Our bodies and minds bear amputations and scars, but none of us is alone. Together, we have woven the tattered threads of our unity into. A new tapestry. 在卡加梅的带领下，卢旺达正一步步地走出了大屠杀的阴影，正向民族团结和国家发展的目标前进。然而，仍然有一些声音在指责卢旺达缺乏人权、缺乏民主。那面对这些批评，卡加梅都做出了什么样的回应呢 ？Well, you have made great efforts in achieving national reconciliation and maintaining social stability. In Rwanda, and at the same time, we've we've read reports in Western media or organizations accusing you or the country of human rights violations. But I wonder how Rwanda and、uh, other African countries work together to、um, uh, towards building a fair and just international order and stopping、uh, countries from interfering in their own internal affairs. We are measuring that against what we want for ourselves, for our country, and what we are doing. And if we were to discover that some things may make sense and we need to look at it, then we shall look at it. If we think some of it is just、uh, prejudice, it's、uh, malicious, it's、uh, biased, we shall. Keep that in mind and move on with what we have to do, and 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 sort of ignore it. Move ahead.、Mm -hmm. Now, but there's certainly something wrong with that. Thinking of、uh, these people who just、uh, have a habit of simply throwing blame and criticism all the time. For example, there are things we have been criticised for since、uh, the aftermath of the tragic history. We had here in '94. Even with all the changes that have happened in the last 28 years, they keep referring to the same thing. The, the meaning they are completely blind of a situation that has changed. So that, then you can realize that no, there is something wrong、uh, by those who are fond of making criticism. The aim is to bring you down or put you in a place where you stay permanently. Uh, and there's nothing. Do you respond? So we respond in two ways. Therefore, one is, as I said,、uh, explain. We have accepted there is a problem we have and have to deal with,、uh, but it takes time, and we explain it. There are other things we say. No, this is not actually a problem. It's what we want, and are justified, and they have the right to want to do it that way. We can't be insensitive to certain things.、Uh, for example, if you know, they say here,、yeah, there, there is corruption, there is this, that. You've got to check whether actually there is no corruption. If you are criticizing us because we are not doing things your way, that's fine. 
stay with your criticism, but we also stay with doing things our way, the way we want them. The other side to it, which is ridiculous in a sense, is that it's as if in this world there is one side that has the right to address other people's problems and criticize them and do it and do that. And the reverse is not true. What do you suggest so as to present a different voice in the international media landscape? Yeah, there have been narratives uh, uh, established about Africa or about Rwanda. Having Africa portrayed as one you know, entire entity. Now, by the way, the total population of Africa is more or less like China's population. It's well over a billion, and in a few years we shall be hitting, you know, over two billion. But it is one entire place where that uh, a narrative has been set for. It's that of, you know, being a, a place where everything goes wrong. They keep being there. That means somewhere somebody is not responsible enough. But there are things that have been improving and a lot of progress made in Africa. They may pick not so good a thing and promote it to be what represents Africa or what, you know, whoever has it is, when it is actually not even that good because it serves the interest of, therefore, confirming the narrative that has been set to describe Africa.自1971年建交以来呢,中鲁两国的高层交往频繁,而且互信水平不断的加深。习主席也说,中鲁友谊情比山高。卡加梅在2017年3月访华期间也曾经指出,中国在与鲁旺达的外交关系当中占据着特
and um, want to support what we are doing by understanding what we want. That China would come and say to Rwanda that uh, you need to be doing this. If we need any assistance or borrow from China, we borrow for what we want to do, not necessarily not what China wants us to do. That's why I said there is a collaboration, there is understanding of each other, there is a mutual respect, if you will. That independence is left to us. Sometimes they have, people have blamed China for, they talk about, you know, countries having taken from China, huge, you know, borrowed a lot, and end up with the, the so-called debt trap. The so-called debt trap. It is not yet a China's fault. Sometimes should be should all be seen as being maybe the problem of the borrower. It's not for China to come and think for the borrower and say, you know what, you, you need to borrow for this, you need to do that. No, it is the borrower who has the responsibility to know what they are borrowing for. Uh, and sometimes maybe they have borrowed, maybe even for the right things, but ended up not exactly investing the way they should have, and things go wrong. I, I don't think this would be a problem of China. Your Excellency, you have met with uh, President uh, Xi Jinping quite a few times, and how do you describe your interactions with him? It's uh, broad in the sense of uh, the ground uh, covered in terms of uh, thinking and what the relationship between Rwanda and China holds and could uh, result into in terms of, for example, my country, Rwanda, and uh, the thinking generally of uh, the working of the international systems, like the point we talked about, the independence with which uh, countries have to operate, uh, again, the sustainability of what we, uh, we do and the relationship and uh, what we talk about and what we benefit from as Rwanda working with China uh, all seem to be quite in harmony and uh, that's why I have enjoyed uh, many times uh, having to deal with the President Xi Jinping. Well, Mr. President, lately I've come to learn a long-standing Umganda culture in your country. And it emphasizes mutual help and joint participation for common good. And uh, we have a similar uh, saying in China. Uh, when people are united, they can move a gigantic mountain to a new location. Do you think such cultural spirits have guided uh, cooperation between China and Rwanda? Certainly, one res resonates very well with the other. And uh, the origin of uh, our Umuganda, mobilizing people to work together around the different challenges, the past mindset is such that people have to wait until somebody else calls upon them to do it or gives them a hand to do it. But we are saying, no, it should be the other way around. Do what you want to do and what you think makes sense for you. And then somebody will extend a hand to just uh, give you a little more push to, to move further and do better than you are doing on your own. So really, that, that, that's uh, where the or um, philosopher of Muganda also originates from. Well, Mr. President, um, many Chinese have a strong interest uh, in Rwanda. For example, we lately reported on how uh, Rwanda protects its mountain gorillas. Um, and we, rec we received tremendous uh, online feedback. What do you expect our Chinese audience to know about, uh, to know about Rwanda? Well, that brings up its, its tourism, its conservation, you know, which brings uh, 
the whole idea of how we, we, we preserve our environment and, and the beings in that. Rwanda is open to the beauty of the country and uh, different unique experiences. So we, we, for that, we need more money coming from tourism and from conservation uh, to reinvest in, in, in sustainability of our environment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank you. Yeah. The best to you too. Yeah, it's a pleasure.中国和卢旺达虽然相距遥远